All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back from spring break. I hope everyone had a uh, fun or productive or relaxing time, depending on what you're going for. Well, would you mind grabbing that door for me, please? Uh, yeah, welcome back to Herpetology. I know it was a long week without Herpetology class, but you guys looks like y'all made it through more or less unscathed. We'll see. Hope that, uh, yeah, hope you're ready to get back at it. We don't have that much left in the semester. And uh, this part of the class this semester, we're gonna be getting outdoors a lot more too. So we don't have that much time in the classroom here. Um, starting next week, we're gonna be doing a lot of outings uh, next week, Wednesday being the mud puppy outing. So yeah, be ready to, to be outside a lot more. The weather's changing quickly. Snakes will be moving soon down in Delaware Run. Uh, we, got, we got lots of fun stuff on hand. So. Today's class though is, uh, I don't even have a, a PowerPoint set up or anything. Today's class is strictly review. You have your first exam on Wednesday. You have two exams this semester. Sem sem combined semester and salamander right there at the same time. Very common, uh, common mistake, I know. Uh, you have two exams this semester, one on Wednesday, and then one during your final exam period, um, whatever that is. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's on the syllabus. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's a written exam. It is in class. It is closed book. It is 70 minutes to do it. Um, I see a number of you that uh, are taking it in the testing center. That's set up. I will coordinate with them. Thanks for getting that arranged uh, plenty in advance. Um, otherwise, just plan on being here for 70 minutes on, uh, on Wednesday. So, you know, if we start at 10 after, we probably might start a few minutes late, but that'll push us to about 20 after three or so. You can expect to be done just so you have that idea. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not writing a 70 minute exam. I'm writing about a 50 ish minute exam. Um, of course, the way I write the exam doesn't necessarily mean that's how long it's going to take. But just so you know that that my plan is to have the exam shorter than the amount of time you have so that you're not uh, super pressed for time. So that's coming up on Wednesday. It covers everything we've covered in class so far this semester, which is a lot of stuff, which is why you're all coming back from spring break. And we're going to spend the whole class today reviewing and going over information and doing that kind of thing. And Princeton has very kindly set up a Mentimeter quiz. Um, so let's just, should we just go to it? Or before, okay, we're gonna do this uh, questions, comments, concerns before we start the Mentimeter. All right, the goal of this Mentimeter quiz uh, is to, to see, uh, uh, is to kind of provide a self-assessment of what you know in class and a fun way to do that. And also an impetus, like a prompt to um, talk about topics in class. And so where the way Princeton set it up is each, there's units, like each, each kind of, topic that we covered in class has a series of questions. So we'll work through all of those questions. There's usually how many questions in it? Five or so questions in a topic. Once we do those five questions, then we'll take a break, we'll debrief, we'll do some chalk talk, we'll answer additional questions, talk about those concepts, and then we'll move to the next topic. That way we can kind of work through the quiz and we can see, you, can, you all have a chance to like win instead of like one big victor. And we have like several small, uh, champions, which is really the way it should be. Ideally, we'd have, you know, 27 quizzes and each of you would be a champion in your own area, but that would take a long time. Um, so yeah, we'll debrief. So, so my point in saying all that is, is as we're working through each topic, just save your questions and at the end of that topic, we'll debrief, okay? And now is the time to ask questions for sure. Cool, all right, Princeton here, wanna take over here. I'll share the screen and Zoom. And I'm recording the session as well. So that we can, that was nice, good move there. Um, so that you have the recording later in here. I'll let you take over from here. All righty, all righty. Let's see, what do I want to start with? Let's start with amphibian diversity. Okay, wait, let me just make sure. Don't look. Yes, use your phone. You're going to get a QR code in a second. And if, if you have like a laptop and you want to do that, there's a way to do it too. Yeah. So you your grab phone. your phone, scan this QR code. Uh, you can also alternatively go to the site and enter this code. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah. I'm going to fix this because they can't see. What I'm going to do is set this up so it duplicates the screen. So what you see in here is what you see in there. Oh, looky there. 
I normally don't do that with PowerPoint, yeah. but for this, I think it'll be easier. Oops. Yeah, I think so. And then let me just make sure Zoom is sharing that screen too. And then here I can close down all these other windows, so it's just easier to get back to there. And there you go. Okay. Sure. All right. Now you can see it, whereas you couldn't before. All right. Yes, give me love. Cool. That's what it's supposed to have. So you're supposed to see instructions and then just have a little heart. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Once you log on, can everyone please like the like little heart so I can see how many people there are? Almost 24. <laughs> so much positive validation. I've never received this in my entire life. Oh my gosh. The hearts are just like people liking the slide. So I think so. And we are missing. Is there anyone that's not on the presentation? Oh, beautiful. Okay. So we're, we're, we're all good, right? Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's do it. Oh, so many smiling faces. <laughs> Someone left. Someone joined back on right now. Everyone here is logged in. Oh, really? Hmm. There we go. We have 26. Okay. So everyone's on. Okay, cool. Let's start. All right. Answer fast. Yeah. One more person. Ten more seconds. See if you haven't voted. Vote. I don't know. Did we? Time's up. Yes. Pro TA Day and Crypto Branch Day. The mud puppies and the hellbenders. They are neotenic slash paleomorphic. For the purposes of this class, they mean the same thing. Yeah, did you have a question? What's Nectaris? Uh, Nectaris are mud puppies. Yeah. Yeah. Technically correct. I guess that's true. Uh oh, <laughs> not off to a good start on my part. <laughs> All right, well, let's just ignore that. Okay. <laughs> Listen. Did we? I thought we were right. I hope it's bigger on your screens. <laughs> Um, 
<laughs> oh. Yeah. It's the salamandra. So remember, these are the newts, and they are really special because they go from an aquatic larval stage to a terrestrial eft stage, which is like a juvenile teenager, and then they go back in the water when they're ready to breed and they're adults. So they have this sort of three-stage life cycle from aquatic, terrestrial, back to aquatic again. Do you name the species in this family in Ohio? Eastern newt, which is, what's the Latin on that? It's really complicated. It's the hard one to spell. Cool. All right, so next question. Do you want to write it and then should I continue? Uh, you should go ahead. I'll, just, I'll, I'll take this board. We can discuss it after this set of questions. Yeah. All right. Get ready, get ready. Uh, Yeah, Sicilians. <laughs> That's rough. Just remember that anuras are the frogs and toads. All right, moving on. Is everyone okay? Are we all on the quiz? Oh. All right. Yeah, you gotta know it. <laughs> nice, there we go. So, frogs in the family Hylidae are also anurans, and so they are most closely related to other anurans than they are to anything else. Because remember that they are monophyletic. All right, last question. Uh, at the end, yeah. <laughs> yes, there we go. So it is true that Sicilians are equally as related to both Onura and Caudata. And that's the answer that I wanted you to get because they aren't more related to frogs or toads and they aren't more related to salamanders, but they're equidistant from both of them. All right, let's see who won. Sebastian the crab. Nice. It was Sebastian. You can reap all of the fame. Nice. <laughs> Impressive. Incredible. Yeah. Of a reptile, what are those guys? Slime skin? Amphibians. Uh, that, was, that was our question on amphibian diversity. So topics we covered was evolutionary relatedness among the major clades of amphibians. Um, covered some species in Ohio, 
as well as some natural history related to um, some of these guys, specifically the, the three-stage life cycle of the Easter Newt, uh, the pedomorphic uh, form of mud puppies. Uh, we also talked about a major group of these salamanders being lungless. Which family is lungless? Pathodontidae, right. So we know that too. Those guys are lungless. What else? What other questions you have about that topic or what else would be useful to review? Go ahead. How well do you need to know Latin? Well That's a good question. Um, any of the, okay, so let me answer that very specifically. Any of the species that I gave as examples for each family. So when we talked about reptilian and amphibian diversity, we walked through major families and I highlighted I don't know, a couple families from each major group. So there was a couple families of frogs and toads, a couple families of salamanders. And then within each of those, I give you an example of species from Ohio. Now we really haven't spent a lot of time in this class getting into the whole diversity in Ohio, but I do want you to know those species. So those specific species in Ohio that I gave you as examples, you should know those and you should know which family they're in. And um, Sorry, yeah, no, go um, I was just going to say, and our next Mentimeter quiz will focus on that. So oh, yeah. you'll get some practice oh, there. that's right. Yeah, that's, yeah, thank you. And so you won't need to spell it, uh, but you'll need to pick it out from a list, right? And so I might say, like, which of these is in the family Salamander Day? And you'll see Nodophelman iridescens and Plethodon cenarius and, and Bistema maculatum, you know, et cetera. And you need to know, oh, that's the spot it's at. Okay. Uh, let me get Athena, then you can go ahead. Um, will there be like images of the organism we need to build identify? I just realized that your name contains all the same letters as Ethan's name. Whoa. <laughs> you just have to rearrange them. Whoa. That's, oh, damn, you do. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah. That'd be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Bettina, question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, would we wow. be given like a picture of the organism we need to know what it is? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I'm going to say no, although you'll see that Princeton has an example of that up here, but I'm not going to do that. We just haven't spent a lot of time visually identifying those, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you that, although I could um put a picture up and give you some specific information so for example i could show a picture of a mud puppy and show its external gills and say hey this is an adult and you can see external gills what characteristic does this salamander have you could say it's okay. so same with like anatomical structures you don't really need to yeah we did we, i just don't feel like we spent time in this class on that yet um that's part of what i want to do the second half of the semester so i would say you don't need to identify species by it Good. I'm glad you asked that. Though. That's a really good question. Ethan, go ahead. If we asked about, if you asked about a different fam a family group on like a set of responsibility like that, where you asked you an example and you're looking for the one that we mentioned in class as the example, mm -hmm. is it okay to use others in the same group or do you want that? Oh, no, you if, as long as it's correct, I don't care. You can use, okay. yeah, yeah, because there's plenty of, of examples. Like if I ask you about, I don't know, skinks and you talk about the broadhead skink instead of the five line skink, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Yep, good question. What else? What else you want to know? What else is unclear? Should we go on to what's next? Amphibian uh, identification. Identify. Yeah, yeah. Sid, go. Ahead. Um, Dr. Mason talked about the the frogs that are venomous. Do you have to ask the tentacles? No, I'm not gonna. And I, I'll tell you right now, I'm not gonna ask you about. Uh, I'm only in terms of venom. We're just going to talk about um, snakes. And, and Toxicophora in that, that mm -hmm. those concepts. But I'm, I'm not going to get into the potentially venomous frogs or uh, Sicilians or anything. You look sad. <laughs> well, we didn't really, we didn't, you didn't get into too much detail with. Yeah, but you wrote down the species names and all of that. So that was like torture. Right. No, we won't. Uh, no, none, none of the venom questions we focus on that. But good that you asked now. I was going to ask. Yeah, there's a whole section on that. Should we do amphibian identification? Is that next? Sure, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. All right, all right, all right. So this one is definitely going to be focused more 
on the stuff that you don't have to know, which is like looking at a picture and telling me what amphibian this is. So, yeah. Oh, no, there's no call. We, we, we actually, that's something I need to do soon in classes mm -hmm. there. I mean, like, it's frog calls, because we're going to start hearing frog calls like yeah. this week. So, oh, they're already out. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I forgot that we have to cover that. Yeah, we have too much to do. We, I think yeah. we're going to extend this class to the summer. <laughs> yeah. Any of you guys that are graduating can just kind of stay on. Yeah. Pay an extra semester's worth of tuition. Yep. Yeah, the chorus frogs are already out. Yeah, have you heard them? Yeah. Oh, I have not. Oh, yeah. When I was going out to some talent editors, they were out like the point where you can't hear anything else. Really? Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. There's a ton on that part. Yeah, I got it. I have not been out there. I've been so busy. Unfortunately. All right, just a couple more. You guys really, that's, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> My son was obsessed with some app that where you just kind of hit the button over and go, oh, pop, pop, cat. Yeah. Was that you know? There's invisible pouch that we click the screen a bunch of times until it moves at you, and then it moves more and more. Really? Yeah. That one's like a great website. Yeah. So you have to like find it. Yeah, it doesn't show you, and you just keep keep clicking your screen until it like gets super annoying. Whoa, who's what is that? Is that a dragon? Uh, we're missing somebody who's missing. Oh, it's basically one more person. 25. Come back. No, come back. Don't leave. <laughs> Who's the paper clip? Who's the paper clip? Like everyone else is so exciting. And then this person just a paper clip. <laughs> it's kind of sad. All right, cool. So I think that's everyone. Uh, let's go. All right. So this is what I'm talking about. You? Yeah. If you get it wrong, out the class. What's good about this is <laughs> you, know, you do need to know what family this species is in. So even yes. though I'm not going to ask you for identifying based on photo, the information here is very relevant to know what species is in what family. One more person. Come on, got it. No, no. Nice, it is a plethodon scenario. So it is a red back salamander, and it is in the family or the yeah the family plethodon today. Cool. Remember plethodon scenarios, red back salamander, and that is our our poster child for plethodon, which you remember is the largest group of salamanders. In fact, the majority of salamander species are in this one family, and so the majority of salamanders are in fact. They are small and they are lungless and terrestrial. So, good things to know. This one you should know. If you don't, then I'll be sad. And hopefully, this <laughs> no, it's no, it doesn't. You got to read carefully. It's a tricky one. That's why you got to really know these things. Ooh, pretty even spread. Nice. It is maculosis, not maculatum. Uh, that might be, that definitely is getting too into the weeds of things, but just for your information, I guess, um, it is Nectaris maculosis, the mud puppy, and they're in the family Proteidae. Common name? Nice. You are so common. <laughs> That's correct. This question is more applicable to what you would see on an exam, for instance. Just waiting for a couple more people here. 
Nice, yeah. How do we know it's run a day? Frost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. What about those other families? Those are those Good. Except Those are sneaky boys. <laughs> yeah, but Amplexus is the mating hold of an errand, so. Awesome. Okay, so this gets it. Yeah. All righty, let's keep going here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Bufana days. So remember, Bufana days are the toads. <laughs> Uh, for those of you that picked Hylidae, those are actually the tree frogs. So if you see like a gray tree frog or something cling to a wall, or even like a little cricket frog on the side of a pond, those are uh, Hylidae. But Bufonidae, they are dry, wordy skin, they mainly terrestrial, and they're commonly known as the toads. What was it hoping about? Oh, looky there. Well, I, you know, I think it was hoping that you would not pick him up and make him pee and lose water. That's my, I wrote that question. I was hoping for a better future for all of the other quantities. Pretty even split. Yeah. Just remember that these are the crypto branches. So these are the hellbenders. But Salamangidae are very small, whereas crypto branchidae are very large. No, they don't. No, crypto branchidae. You see one right here, but Crypto branch today is Hellbender, and so mm -hmm. this guy right here do not have external gills. Yep. So, Mud puppies are the ones that have external gills, and they're and they are aquatic. And so, Andrew Day, as Princeton said, uh, the Eastern New of Dallas greatest, they have external gills, but at what stage do they have those? <laughs> What's it? The first stage, the middle. Second. First and second. So they're aquatic, then they're terrestrial, then they're aquatic. They uh, No, first and third. Did I say first and second? First and third. They. I don't think so. No, not as adults. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, just in the first grade. Yeah, sorry. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Yeah. So just remember, group to branch day. All benders, very big boys, uh, no external gills, wrinkly, and very, very cool. All right, let's see who's the winner. Who's Orange? That's a great name. <laughs> nice, very nice. <laughs> So, 
Um, they have some characteristics that are neotenic, but they're not as obviously so as your mud puppies, which have the, the external gills. What really gives it away? Um, we did classify them as such because they do have some characters that are not developed in adults. I'll say now, though, because it's not as obvious, if I ask you a question about uh, pedomorphic salamanders in Ohio, I'll ask you about them. Um, so there, there are some, it, so the, yeah, the, 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 I'm giving a little bit of a wishy washy answer. There are some characteristics of hellbender that are considered neotenic or pedomorphic, but it's not as obvious as my puppy. And so I'm not going to ask you uh, questions about the pedomorphism. Does answer your question, SK? So, okay, good. I'm trying to be as clear as possible. Uh, uh, Lennon. The mud puppies are part of the Protidae family, right? Protidae, yep. Yeah. Got it. And just a quick reminder hellbenders are in what family? Protidae. Right. And then newts, Easter newts. Redbacks, Eastern Redbacks salamander. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spotted salamander. Uh -huh. Yeah. And this the matter day, and there is um, okay. So there is a famous salamander in this family that is oh yeah um, pedomorphic, and it's just a little bonus aside here. You know the name of the what's the salamander in this family that's pedomorphic? It's it's kind of it's become a little bit of a popular yeah oh, yeah axolotl axolotl. I, I think so, yeah. Right. My, I don't have my sticker on here. It's my axolotl, okay. axolotl oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so those guys, these are, and they're from Mexico. Um, so I'm not going to ask you about it, but just know that's the same family as the other guys. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the juvenile, like spotted salamanders or other salamanders in this family, look like adult axolotls. They have those gills and little slightly bits here. <laughs> other questions? Good on amphibians. All right, maybe let's do one more and then we'll take our, our big class break. Sure, Good let's do it. Got some mojo going. All right. No, let's. It's the monstrosity. <laughs> Not directly, but it's like one of those like cryptid things that's a an amphibian. Looks like a manatee in a down in yeah. down in Cincinnati in the fifties. A, a guy claimed to have seen a frog person, and so it's the t-shirt. <laughs> Where did you get a t-shirt like that? I just ordered online. Well, I bet there's, I think there's a museum in Cincinnati. Yeah. Like that's not sure. Next time we're well, in Cincinnati. Yeah, it's, well, it's not Cincinnati. It's in Loveland, so it's outside of Cincinnati. But it's in the area. All right, waiting for a couple more people here, I believe. So many hearts, I'm getting overwhelmed with emotion. Yeah, I've never had anyone love me this much. What? <laughs> for one more person, I think. There we go. All right, let's get started here. Uh, this one is phylogenies. Whoa, who's Mr. Incognito? More? All right, let's get started. A little frog keeping company there. These are good answers. Is this one from the review session that you did? Just a couple more people here. No. <laughs> Oh, 
Interesting. No. No. Yeah. No. No. What a fool. Vincent's going to fix this question and then re ask it. All right. Right? And while he does that, I'm going to make sure we got this concept down. So we're going to take a. Oh my God. That was such. I'm such a fool. Mammals? Yeah. yeah. And then you said reptiles are parasitic with respect to birds. But herps are Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, all of herps. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you got it. Well, wouldn't it be mammals and birds? It would be mammals and birds. Yeah, right. Still change the answer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, my brain is not working today. It's terrible. Okay, let's go over this, though. Yeah, so here's our root uh, vertebrate. I'm sorry. Okay, and so here we've got, I'm just going to put all amphibians together, right? And we know that there are three major clades of amphibians, which are what? Yeah, and which two of those are more closely related to each other than either is to the other one? Yes, the neurons and the cut out of so frogs and sailings. Okay, so we got amphibians. Then this guy branches out here. We go here, and I'm trying to think how I want to draw this. Let's throw let's throw mammals over here, right? And so I'm I'm really sorry that I uh, misspoke there and confused everybody terribly. And we're gonna do. I'm gonna get into a little more detail here. Can you read that? Yeah, like technically, we're going to detail each other. We're going to answer another question. No, no, because it's, it's paraphyletic because. Um, I'll erase it. Or no. Mammals and birds still get it. Yeah. It'll just be a little more. The whole thing to make for But if they're not. Okay. So here's an example of a phylogeny of the terrestrial vertebrates. So amphibians are the outgroup to everything. I don't include fish or lungfish or anything on here. Then it gets way complicated. But I do want to remind you all that all of these, including mammals, including all of us in the room here, are essentially a subset of uh, one of the groups of fish. So really, I want to take a step back. And those of you that took vertebrate anatomy with me know this. Um, we're all, uh, the term fish is actually paraphyletic and, and fish, in fact, as a group don't really exist. And if they did, then all of these would be considered fish as well, because all of these are a subset of one specific group. That's a story for another day. Um, in terms of terrestrial vertebrates, amphibians are the outgroup to everything else. And so what Prince's question correctly said, the herps, quote unquote, is paraphyletic with respect to what? Um, that would be mammals, because they're nested within here, meaning that mammals are more closely related to other reptiles than they are to amphibians. And also birds, which are nested within the reptiles, right? And I got tripped up there for some reason my brain was reading reptiles instead of herbs, so I apologize uh, for that confusion. It's just like I forgot the other A and the fetus name. This is going to help the day. Go ahead. <laughs> so when you say paraphyletic with respect to something, mm -hmm. that something that it's respected to is what needs to be excluded for it to then become monophyletic? Exactly. So to be a true group, herbs, you would need to not include mammals or birds. So it's paraphyletic with respect to now, this whole group here is reptiles. So if the question was, uh, to which group are reptiles considered paraphyletic? That would be what? Birds. Birds, birds, right? birds. birds and crocs are sister taxa. Notice that turtles, again, remind you here that turtles are the outgroup there. So they are more closely related to crocs and birds than they are to other reptiles. Those other reptiles include squamates. And I just threw a little to the tower branch on there too. We're gonna get into this more detail. I'm gonna actually, do a lecture later in the semester too on dinosaurs and, and ex, uh, ex, extinct reptile groups. 
Um, and they all like this, this whole tree is really simple. And you throw those guys in there. It's like, there's all these other crazy groups that are now. Wait, now I'm confused. What's the answer? <laughs> the answer that you gave? What's the correct answer? What's the correct answer? It was all birds. Both. Yes. Thank you, McKenna. That's exactly right. Yeah. It would be so if you're talking about perps in general, they're paraphyletic with both the mammals and birds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly the point though, say that you're exactly right, and that's exactly the point. So that that's why calling you know perps is a group in an evolutionary sense. Is why is there like a tetrapodology or whatever? It's all tetrapod. Because because the looks were low, they're little, they're probably spiders. They, they used to actually back in the day, they used to throw like spiders and worms and like everything. It was like a catch all for the honestly, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Let's add some bugs on it. Yes, it's just stress and spiders. Uh, I saw another hand up though, and I missed it. Who had another question? No, I'm the dragon. That's why you need to Okay. So you're back on there. Go ahead, cover your still on. I want to make sure if you learn nothing else in this class this entire semester. I want you to know these evolutionary relationships. Are we are we solid on this? No. Okay. No. Questions. Go ahead. I just don't. I don't get it. Okay. Which which part? The, 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 How okay, the mammals and birds are so far apart. Yes. But they're both paraphyletic for herbs. I understand you. It's a really good question. It's simply because they're both nested within this bigger group. Mammals and birds don't have any special relationship to each other, other than the fact that they both happen to be groups of organisms that are in on this figure right here that we don't consider quote unquote herbs. Okay. So there's no, that's, I'm really glad you asked that. There's no special relationship between mammals and, and birds. Um, they just happen to be on here. One distinguishing characteristic we could say is we could talk about ectothermic tetrapod vertebrates versus endothermic tetrapod vertebrates. Not the most like easy to say phrase, but that would in fact separate neatly the amphibians and reptiles excluding birds, which are ectothermic tetrapod vertebrates from mammals and birds, which are endothermic tetrapod vertebrates. So if you wanted to think of some justification for splitting up those groups that way, you could think of that. Abby, I'm going back to you. Does that does that make sense now? Yes, it does. That's what we're, okay. All right. So we're going to go back to one more person. We got three people, two people still on there. Yes, just, you know, unless we get started, we're not going to get the question because we understand. It's just, it's just going to put us on substitute too. Did you restart it? Yeah, I did not. The score. Um, yeah. Did it reset the score? I did, yeah. So we're just going to skip that one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. if you get it wrong now, we'll, then I'll be sad. Even more sad about the fact that I actually got it wrong the first time. Okay. Are we still waiting for one person? The answer isn't incorrect. It just wasn't. Just not complete. Yeah. Is everyone on? Yeah. I think so. There we go. All right, let's go. Hopefully, maybe this will be correct, but with my track record, who knows? <laughs> nice. Yes. Why is that not a monophyletic group? Perfect answer. Yes. It doesn't include all of what? They don't have doesn't include this or this. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm going to look at. And so, a monophyletic group includes all of the descendants of the most recent common ancestor. So, where would we? Okay, so if we're looking at this little figure here, at what point should we like 
place the uh, cutoff for where it should be um, a monophyletic group. That made zero sense. <laughs> How can we make this a monophyletic group while still including this and these two? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So you'd have to basically do the entire thing because you would have to get this little node right here and it would include all these and all these. Cool, cool, all right. This is an important one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are toes monophyletic or not? I thought they were. So I thought they were at the same time. No. No. Toes, what we commonly call toes. We just. Of frog, yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Like the, oh. the, uh, uh, Bigfoot. Bigfoot, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, those guys. And then there's other groups too that are just commonly called toads. And then other kinds. Of, like the Suriname toad, for example. Yeah. Just the frog. Yeah. But yes, snakes are monophyletic, but lizards are not monophyletic. And what's the reason why? Yes. Exactly. And so basically, snakes are just like right smack dab in the middle of lizards. And so they are, uh, lizards themselves are not monophyletic, but within that, you know, the snake part of lizards are monophyletic. So snakes are monophyletic, but lizards are paraphyletic with respect to snakes. Remember also lizards are, are paraphyletic with respect to amphibians. Yeah, those worm lizard guys. Lizards and post serpentine lizards. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's move on. All right, which phylogeny is correct? So tiny. So tiny. Can you, is is it on your phone? Oh crap! No. Everyone swarmed aboard. I cannot hear. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Why isn't it on your phone? I can't even read it. Gosh, I can't even read it. And I'm all right. Oh, I can read it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's on all right, maybe you can draw this one out. Yeah, I cannot read those. I'm sorry. I thought that it would be on your phones. So this question is the amphibian phylogeny. Can I help me draw this? I'm actually going to draw this one a little bit different now. I'm going to draw this one with one of these slanted phylogenies. <laughs> All right, here's the amphibian phylogeny. What group goes? Uh, let's just pick one. What group goes here? Anurans. Cool, anurans. That's what I heard the loudest. Anurans. So now the other two uh, have to go in certain places. Which one has to go here? Uh, that and why is that? Because those are. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And so what's here? Oh. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 sorry. Yep. You could also, we could also redraw this. Yeah. 
Now I drew a, drew a different topology. What goes here? The ceiling. Yep. And then what goes here? Neurons and cutouts. Okay, good, good. Let's eat that. All right, back to the quiz. Cool, cool. All right, last question. Oh, this is a question I wrote. It's super hard. It's a good question. Yeah. I'm going to put this. Yeah, it's too on the But it has a different topology. Well, the same, I should say, same, same topology, but different kind of, it's rotated differently. So. That's right, you can use it as a resource. It's not an easy question. I think I saw it. It's on the board. No. It is. It is. Oh. Very, good. Very good. So the reason you could tell that is, is because of the relationship <laughs> to crocs of birds, right? Yeah. So turtles are the upgroup to the sister taxa that <laughs> contain crocs and birds here. Yeah. What would it take for crocodile? Come on. Let's 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 keep the jump. Ah, that's fair. So Kevin pointed out that I did say each other represents a major group of reptiles, and I guess you are right. And when I was writing that, I was thinking for I I in this class I haven't really done this, but in general, when I say reptiles, I mean birds too, unless I say non-avian reptiles, which is super clumsy, but. So I guess it's just words. So what I should have said there represents a major group of reptiles, including birds. You're right. I think you did, but I might have taken it off because of word <laughs> limit. So I did that right, but yeah, <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> Mentimeter has character counts, character caps. <laughs> <laughs> it was too long. I had to shorten it somehow. Okay, cool. Now let's see who won. Did Brock win? Whoa, so close. This time, Croc got to eat Ronald McDonald. Nice. Very nice. I was so close. Good. Other questions to clarify what we're talking about here. This one plus oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. And then also on the interesting that snakes are grouped. 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 Snakes are gr
to this survey, you kind of said the, the most convincing reason to say yes, they're all venomous, the most convincing reason to say no, they're all venomous. So you might have a multiple choice question like around this topic. Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, we said no, right? We said, yeah, we're not gonna, we're gonna get to all that later. So yeah, and I'll mention that at the end of class. So let me actually make a note. Yeah, let me make a note of that. Yep. Yeah. Do we have to do the sub families for bipyridae? Sub families for bipyridae? Like crotally? Yeah. yeah. No, no. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> I made flashcards for that too, and I was like, I can't remember these. No, we won't. We don't need to get it. Okay. Thank you. No. Yeah, it's a Are we going to? Ah, that's a good question. Um, I'm not going to ask you specific questions about those papers, but I will draw from the concepts that we got in those papers. So, for example, the last paper we talked about intra versus there's some other concepts in there that are better. Or the paper we read at the end of the talked about venom evolution and it's for venom specific to those papers, but it's your question? Yeah. I think I'm not answering questions very well today. Cool. Yeah. Glad we're doing this because it highlights for me all the stuff we need to cover the second half of the semester. We haven't done frog calls yet. We haven't done uh, we haven't done extinct reptiles yet. That's like a week of class right there. The, between that and the field outings and functional morphology and thermal biology, I think we got the crest. Yeah. It's going to take us through the end. Just feel like, no matter what I do, I'm going to have Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. What are we doing next? Thank <laughs> you. 
All right. So looking for a few more people on here. Uh, reptiles. <laughs> Looks like we're missing a couple more people. If everyone would log on, that would be really nice. And give the heart a little like because I can get more validation. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just. Come on, get on. Okay. Let's see if we can take down Sebastian the Crab or uh, what was the Crocs? Crocs. 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 Yeah. Or Ronald the Burger. Ronald. Ronald's, Ronald's going to be at the top. I hit the legs on this. There we go. All right, let's go. <laughs> what happened? Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I probably just missed it. Uh, no. Five seconds left. Oh, this is a tough one. Interesting. They're within lizards. What does sister type say? Sister means that they're 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 more closely related to that oh. than the other. So if you look at the board up here, for example, crocodile birds would be sister. Yeah, that makes sense. Wait, so there's. They are, the yeah. Swamis, right? But they're mm -hmm. now more closely related to the snakes than they are to other lizards. Right? Okay. Yeah. So they and they're monophyletic. So they're just like basically. I could switch this out. I could say which of the following. I could switch the word snake and amphibian in this question. And it would be the exact same thing. They're basically both highly derived groups of lizards. So they're monophyletic groups of lizards. <laughs> Very nice. All right, let me just go back here and make the full screen. Uh, it depends on which lizard you're talking about. Cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. What are these guys again? They are the worm lizards. But there's a lot of different kinds of lizards. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, we're good. Are we? I think we're good. Yeah. Sick. All right. Question two. The whole thing restarted. What? What? Are we good? <laughs> <laughs> you should probably recognize all of them. Yeah, interesting. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. so they do. No turtles have fangs. No turtles have teeth. <laughs> <laughs> 
this all right, let's keep going on. Yeah, it is my period. <laughs> <laughs> What's an example species of a snake in the family Viperidae? All right, number four. Let's go. <laughs> If you get this one wrong, I'll be really sad. <laughs> Yeah. All right, good, good, good. What's the species? Yeah, good. If, if, if anybody finishes the scotch in the semester doesn't know, come wallows are better somewhere else. That's what we fail. Let's go through these families real quick while this is up. Iguanidae, there is one species of Iguanidae found in Ohio. Eastern Pencils are Latin names. Starts with an S. Glopris <laughs> undulatus. Yeah. And remember that we talked about um, um, the they're in the subfamily uh, Phrynosomatidae. Mm -hmm. So we have one day's a big family, includes lots of species like iguanas, green iguanas, they're all familiar with. And then the subfamily is Phrynosomatidae, which includes like the horned lizards, like horny toads, they're commonly called. Mm -hmm. And then one species in that subfamily is here in Ohio. No. no. We have them in the US, but not here in Ohio. Scalopris undulatus, which is the eastern pencil. Okay. But they're in the same subfamily as the horny toads. Okay. So are they an then? They are. Since yes, that's why that's not the correct okay. answer. Varanidae, why is Varanidae not the correct answer? They're monitor lizards, they're in Asia, Australia. Big uh, yeah, well, everything's <laughs> in Florida. If you were to class in Florida, it would be a, be a different kind of food. Uh, with certain day, we talked about things. Uh, I never know if it's a hard or soft suit. Skinkaday or Sinsaday. Why is that not the correct answer? Yeah, yeah, there's three native species here. Cool. Very including good. the five line skink, which is skinkus. Yeah. Yeah. Twice the dawn. 
Yes. yes, good. And osteoderms, it's got the, the right. bone structure under its, its skin that make its skin kind of like if you feel one, it, its skin feels like hard. It's really. We were talking weird. about earlier, and I forgot to bring it. And we'll see one, we'll see some skinks in a couple of weeks. We'll see some skinks. Very nice. Skinkus, skinkus, skinkus. All right, let's move on. Last question. <laughs> Who's going to win? Oh, Chris, did you chuck it at this question? I, I had to. It was too long. <laughs> I wrote like a whole paragraph about how you're going to text this picture, but she never really showed an interest in nature. Suddenly she's texting a friend. I have to read it. 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 I have to Oh, interesting. Oh. All right. Why is the answer not wider day? Snapping journal is good. Mm -hmm. So why is that the right answer? Yeah. They're not best. You could. It's possible. But that's why I said it's most likely. Uh, could be a snapping journal. Probably not. It's a student in a day. Why not that? Sorry, sis. We don't have any here in Ohio. And uh, Colonia Day. Oh, What's that? There's not sea turtles. Sea turtles, yeah. Mm -hmm. No sea turtles in Ohio, guys. Sorry to break that into you. Oh. Maybe we get a lake here in sea turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yep, those are the common water turtles. Here in where we live in the eastern U.S., and my today is by far the most common family, both in terms of the number of species and the conspicuousness of those species. I want to get so so many fish in there. For example, who can name some species in the family of my today? Painted turtles. Painted turtles, good. So, Chrysemis, good. Landing, Landing turtles, good. Um, Red eared sliders, yep. Trichemis, yep. So, these are kind of, they're commonly, they're pond and um, river turtles. And you'll find them, um, these are the ones that you see out basking on a block. So, and there's lots of actual parks here in Delaware, even where you see lots of painted turtle basking. Um, like, uh, the, like the preservation parks, you can see all kinds of painted turtles around here. So if you see a turtle out basking on a log around here, it's almost certainly in the family. All right, cool. Cool. Other questions on, oh wait, let's see who won this. Ronald. Oh, is it, oh is 10 you? points. There's no way, you called it Ronald would win, and then Ronald won, even though it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So right there. <laughs> Who's Ronald this time around? All right, let's give it up for, for Ronald. Also, he just vote for vote too. Uh, you got my vote. That? that was you. Okay. Yeah. It's only like 10 point difference. Yeah. So that was like next step. Uh, all right, cool. What questions do you have about reptile diversity? We got the major families down. Yes. Turtles. Oh, there's one other uh, family of turtles that we did not mention in our last question. What is it? What's that? We talked about that with mm -hmm. the answers. What's that? Oh, there's two. There's two. Kind of stern today, which is what? Mud and musk turtles. And then there's one more. Soft shell. I don't know what those are called. Yes. Yep. Trinica day is the other family of turtles. Other questions on my
Let me draw that out. Let me answer that question. I'm going to check with me. I don't know. There are some of these. 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 I'm going to answer one question about the spelling. Actually, Princeton, let's do this. Yeah. Let me look up one thing. And then I need to look at a slide. Actually, you know what? Let me look at this. Um, you can go ahead and get the next quiz up. Prince is going to get the next quiz ready. I'm going to look up one thing and then answer a question with a diagram. But I want to make sure I know this. Oh, the Garyels in the American note. You should know the stuff we covered on the slides. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not actually quite sure with this, but I'm going to draw the diagram. So here's a squamate phylogeny. And you can see here that we've got lizards and then snakes. But then this is very simplified, by the way. There's a whole bunch of more lizard families and stuff. But then we also have amphisbanians and then more lizards. So the takeaway message here is that uh, both snakes and amphisbanians are nested within all of the other lizards, right? The other takeaway here is that snakes and amphisbanians are not sister taxa. It's not like there was one lineage of legless lizards that split into snakes and amphisbanians. That in fact, they're evolved independently. And leglessness evolved independently I don't know, dozens of times within the squamates. We have legless lizards in the family Anguidae. We have legless lizards in the family Skinkidae. We have legless lizards in the family Gecko, Ge Gecko Day. We have snakes, we have amphibians, and there's others too. So what I want you to take away here is that is that snakes are nested within lizards, amphibians are nested within lizards. Mosasaurs are the sister taxa of snakes, right? Mosasaurs are the sister taxons of snakes. So mosasaurs are squamate reptiles. I don't think they're sister. No, no mosasaurs are um, in Veranidae. They are. If I'm not, if I'm not, I don't think so. No. No, they're they're. If I'm not mistaken, mosasaurs are in Veranidae. They're they're sister to extant monitor lizards, or they're nested within extant monitor lizards. Yeah, I think they, they, they weren't sure about the evolution of snakes for a long time, but recent research has pointed to it. Don't we use the class that they were shooting back from the presentation? Google says that they're closely related to snakes and monitor lizards, so I don't know. Well, snakes and monitor lizards are closely related to each other. So, so if I drew this branch out, I would have like, there's all these families of lizards and varanids were close to snakes too. So it's like kind of in there. It's a very simplified version to show you that snakes and amphibians are nested within lizards. Um, there should be a whole bunch more lizard families and stuff up here that I just kind of skipped over. But that's just the takeaway is that um, they're independent lineages within lizards. Does that answer your question, Chase? SK, I'm going to go back to you. Does that answer your question? Cool. All right, we got one more round cool. of quizzing here. If you haven't won yet, this is your last chance to shine. Well done. After this, it's downhill. We're waiting for two more people. Sorry. For the rest oh, of your no Herbert's Classical career. We should, we should have a whole, like, you know, like a, a, a pictures platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A metal ceremony. Like, Not like a pyramid, like a dance <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Okay, well, a lot of people will. So. <laughs> uh, I'll send you a picture. Okay. 
today. <laughs> yeah. What is this dance? What? The girls were on the the All right, if you're not logged in, I guess too bad. Yeah, but the lot of are crap. There you go. Who's the frog? Look at him. All right, let's go. These are hard, by the way. Yeah. I hope they make sense because I just shortened the, the answers. So. Yeah, that was a tricky one. Oh, well, that's not what I said. Yeah, too many versions. All right. I can try. <laughs> I, I'm not the Venom guy. Um, but yeah, so basically, the first three answers are directly associated with uh, changes in diet influencing changes in Venom composition, right? So, like, if you have a more complex diet with a more, uh, you know, different species and different groups, then your venom has to be more complex to be able to actually effectively kill all of the um, complex prey species that you're eating. Um, and, uh, for instance, in the second example, you know, higher um, toxicity on specific prey items. So if I was a snake eating only like, I don't know, worms or something, then my venom would, you know, most likely um, be selected to uh, have a higher toxicity on those worms than on anything else. And same with that last question. Third answer, the third answer. But this, um, but geographic, you know, differences in venom, the neurotoxin and the hematoxin, don't really um, aren't aren't really influenced by diet so much as they are by other genetic factors. So, but like, I think from my mind, like, that was like different triads live in different geographic regions. So you might need different variations of indigenous variations. The fact that that's just not how it's raised, that correct? Yeah. That's what it's with the Yeah. Their area, they're still having the same thing throughout. It's just their pockets and different types of things. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a tough question. It is. exactly why you're following that. Yeah. I'm not going to ask this question. I mean, I got it right. It's good. 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 All right, does everyone sort of understand that? All right, great. Let's move on. Ooh, let's see if we can get this one. This one is tricky. This is the kind of question I can take a test in the exam for sure. Mm -hmm. oh, this one makes up. I don't know why I'm not figuring this so bad. <laughs> this is really important to know as well. So, and we did talk about it. Yeah, yeah, you guys got it. Phenotypic plasticity. What is phenotypic plasticity? Give me an example or a definition. Isn't it just that, like, you have a phenotype of something and it can be the same as 
What do you mean? Um, that's an acceptation. Wait, okay. mm -hmm. What is phenotypic plasticity? <laughs> no, that's the same thing that he was talking about. It's the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, it's when the genetic uh, like basis of a trait. So, for instance, if because. I think of everything in lizards. If we're talking about a lizard, um, it's when the genetic basis of that trait doesn't change, but the actual gene expression of that trait leads to a difference in phenotype. So for instance, if I was an, if I was like in a knoll, right? And I was living on this like really broad, uh perches right and so i'm climbing on this like tree and the tree has really really thick uh branches or whatever my uh my you know like body structure would be um what am i trying to say i think so if if i am in an all and living in this like really thick branch tree it would be more beneficial for me to have longer limbs so I could effectively like, you know, run on this tree and survive in this habitat. But what if I have short limbs, you know, um, genetically? Well, then that, that's where phenotypic plasticity comes in. And if my limb lengths were plastic, I would be able to, well, I, I, would, I wouldn't be able to like, you know, think about changing my limb lengths. But anyway, basically, um, certain gene expressions would be triggered to where I could develop longer limbs in spite of having a short limb gene, for instance. Does that make sense? I might have confused you because I'm not good at explanations. <laughs> yes. So it happens within an individual's lifetime based on an environmental stimulus. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And it's not genetically based. It's more based on the environment. Okay. And so all anyone that exercises, for example, that's phenotypic plasticity. That's using your environment to change some aspect of your phenotype. Is that like epigenetics too? That's where it gets complicated. It's a, that's a whole other class. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>, so <laughs> epigenetic modifications can take those environmentally induced changes in the phenotype and even pass them on to subsequent generations. So they've done experiments with mice where, for example, They'll stress out the mom through whatever, and that will induce epigenetic changes in her genome, which means that the coding sequence is the same. All the C's and A's and D's and B's are the same, but the, the other molecules that control how much those genes are expressed is changed. And then she can pass that information onto her offspring with their, with their, their um, genome. And so that will affect the gene expression and hence the phenotype of the offspring. So it's, it's essentially heritable Plasticity in a way. Yeah, we can change some aspect of your phenotype based on your environment, right? And so in this case, you're intentionally putting yourself in an environment where you're, I don't know, lifting a lot of weights, but that's going to change your phenotype in terms of your muscle size, your bone structure, or things like that. It's a way that your body can respond to its environment. Is that like animals that change the whole? Oh, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, and so, and, and so behavior, um, let's think of another example. Um, frogs that are calling this time of year, they respond to the environmental temperature and other cues. And then when it, when those cues hit, then they go out and they start to call. And so every year that day is a little bit different because they're responding to those cues in the environment and then the environment's a little bit different. That's exactly, that's a great example. Yeah, epigenetics is cool. That kind of blows up our whole idea of biology. It's not really study. So there was a cool study. So in the 1940s in parts of Northern Europe, like um, Denmark or the Netherlands, I don't remember, uh, people there were basically starving because of um, the Nazi occupation and et cetera, et cetera. Bless you. Um, and they've done studies tracking those people and their kids and now their grandkids 
And there's epigenetic modifications that happen because they were starving in the 1940s that are affecting the phenotypes now of those people's grandchildren, whatever, 80 years later, uh, which, is, which is really uh, pretty remarkable. So those, the, it's a way to the environmentally induced plasticity to be transmitted from these dimensions. And it can it's affect things within the individual too. So, yeah. In that same study, they also found that like different um, things that affected like somebody's headspace, like not only their physical state of being, but things that also affected like um, your mental well being could also affect such information. Yes, yeah, there's the mental, like, and that was maybe even the like, most fascinating part mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Is that affected like the mental health of their grandkids? Yeah. The fact that they were starved. Nazi occupation. So, yeah, you can't out, you can't outrun history. Or it's really, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, thanks for yeah, thanks for that. Cool. Sorry, little aside about that, but you got me going in epigenetics. Yeah, the whole class on that. So. Cool. No questions right. in epigenetics. However, you do need to know phenotypic plasticity for sure. All right. Are we ready to move on? Great. Okay. Let's do this. Yes. Why is it by into behavior? All right, cool. Any questions on this one? Yeah, I think you guys got it. Okay. Very nice. That's a this is this question is a bit tangentially related, uh, but I think still important. All right. Nice. Remember, mobile things are viper. So you can just set it, but I want to show you it. What are the kinds of things that vipers have that are mobile that point out? Boom. And what are the things that are in front? They're long, usually, um, but they're fixed. They don't. What's that? It's good. And what are um, your things? Boom. Good. Good, good, good. Nice. All right. Let's see. Cake. Cake. Dang, it's all so close. Are you, are you cake? No. Carl, do so. I finished. Is that you, Will? Are you cake? Let's give it up for cake. Nice. Marsh, uh, and Carl Gustav are like, <laughs> Dr. Marsh, Sunapee, yeah. I like that name. And, um, Carl. Yes. Nice. 
Cool. Well, that's all I got for you today. Um, today it's not on the exams. Okay, so one other thing I want to make sure I clarify here. I think I said this before the break, but I want to make sure everyone's got it. Is we're, I'm not gonna we're not gonna cover functional morphology or thermal biology on this exam. Um, we've got enough other stuff, and we really haven't gotten into those topics too in depth. I know I spent some time with the presentations in class the weeks before um, break, but I don't feel like we've covered it in enough enough depth. Really get into it. We're going to save that for your last exam. So no functional morphology or thermal. We'll get to that later in the semester. So don't forget that we're actually that's going to be our next uh, unit in classes talking about functional morphology and thermal biology, and then we'll get into other fun stuff. We're going to do frog calls. I can't wait to do frog calls. That's always fun for class. You have to be able to ID them by ear. And we'll do a quiz on it. We have to ID them. I listen to the sounds. You'll hear them. You'll hear, yeah, you'll hear frogs real soon here. What other questions do you have before the exam on Wednesday? The format is going to be on paper. You'll have multiple choice questions uh, and then some long answer open response questions. So uh, it may involve drawing figures similar to questions you've had on the quizzes um, or other kind of not necessarily like paragraph format, but open, open-ended open questions. That's your question, Chase? Yeah, like how many choice and how many? I haven't, I haven't figured that out yet. I'm not sure what the ratio is gonna be exactly. Um, I have to look at my question pool and think about that a more. So. Roughly, I'd say about half your time would be spent on multiple choice, half on a longer answer. Although it usually ends up being a little longer than a longer answer just because it takes longer to write things out. So. Uh, let's give a round of applause for Princeton for putting together our Mentimeter today, too. Nice job, nice job, nice job. All right, well, drop me a line if you have questions. Otherwise, we'll see everyone in here on Wednesday, except for a few of you that are taking in the testing center. Those few of you, you don't need to come in at all on Wednesday. We're not doing anything but the exam, so take the exam, and we'll see you next week, Monday.